Now, guys, I got to be honest, that moment I was introduced to these guys, I knew immediately that we had to work together. And it wasn't just because they created some great stuff. It was because these guys absolutely got it. Immediately, you can tell their innovation, their designs, and obviously their use of technology was going to take our AC units and our builds to another level. Speaking about that, that's what I want to talk about. Their S-Series really takes us to another level. What it means is that you can work it off your device, work it from your mobile phone, troubleshoot it, update it, with never having to worry about taking that unit out. It really is going to help you in streamline and obviously help with that process. Now for my installers here at the garage, that makes it so much easier to work on these vehicles. And of course, they have multiple units that fit really nice under that dash and I love the way they uh, they've been innovative and changing it up and really mixing it up and creating some great great product for our builds and that's why we use Resto Mod Air right here at R&D Garage. All right, so today we're working on our 1968 Ford F100. Uh, we went Resto Mod, that's all we use here at our shop. Vapor 2 system here, it's going in the truck. Um, so these are kind of uh, custom build kits. We built a bracket to hold it in the factory location. This is a dash piece that's gonna go underneath the truck because there's nowhere on the dash to actually put the uh, AC vents. Uh, we decided to go with a little bit bigger vent than what we had. In my green truck, we did some little slim lines. We're gonna go with a little bit bigger one here. It'll fit in there real nice, we're gonna paint this truck. Everything fits beautifully. Uh, man, it's just, what else could you ask for? Custom build kits, you know? There's a lot of companies out there that build just your generic bolt-in kit, um, but that's not very personal to anybody. Everybody has their own style and their own way of doing things, so RestoMod gives us the opportunity to, to, to put kits together and make it our own. Hey everybody, what's going on? Danny Coker here, AKA The Count. I'm gonna talk to you about one of my cars in The Count's collection. Uh, I'm a Cadillac guy, you guys know that. I love Cadillacs. I probably own more Cadillacs than I own anything else uh, in my collection. So I absolutely love Cadillacs. This particular example is a really, really great, great car and a great find. It's a 1969 uh, Coupe de Ville. Uh, what's really cool about this car is it was in a state car out of Colorado and uh, it only has 66,000 original miles on it from 1969. It is a very tight, solid, rust-free, rattle-free, wonderful car. Uh, we've done some things to it to make it uh, much more enjoyable for myself that I love. Uh, I've gotta have ice cold air conditioning. I'm a Vegas guy, so I gotta have ice cold AC. Yes, the car came with factory air conditioning, but it's that era of that you know crazy climate control, you know, automatic setup that always seems to go bad after years. So um, we basically gutted the, uh, the whole factory AC system in it, and uh, RestoMod made us a beautiful, uh, air conditioning, uh, aftermarket, brand new AC setup in this car. So the air is ice cold. My man Ryan went absolutely crazy for me on the paint job of this car. This car came to me with a green interior and the white top. And so I wanted to keep the green flavors on the car because the interior is in really excellent condition. So uh, we went with these beautiful green old school Winfield style fades all over the car. 
some beautiful uh, green graphics on it, some green pinstriping. A car that I love, it's a car that I truly enjoy. It's a car that I drive on a regular basis. This is one of my regular drivers, uh, even though I'm very cautious as to where it may go because I don't want anything to happen to it. Speaking of driving. <laughs> Yeah, man, it's the kind of car you put your Marvin Gaye CD on, sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride. This car is all about drive it, enjoy it, uh, and look cool doing it. Thing looks great. What's up? This gentleman right here is losing his mind already on the car. As long as he don't run into me, I don't mind him looking. <laughs> you know, when I got the car, uh, the interior was, as you see it, it's a green interior in the car and it's just really in phenomenal condition. So I didn't really want to take that all apart and redo all of that when, when it had that much going for it. And being a Vegas guy, it is very much a Vegas car. An old Cadillac like this, is, uh, it's got a lot of Vegas vibe to it. Big white walls, the wire wheels. Kept all the chrome, this crazy, beautiful, classy paint job. So proper Cadillac, especially for Las Vegas. So once again, I hope you guys are enjoying uh, the view of this beautiful car as it goes down the road. 1969 Cadillac Coupe de Ville. I call her cream de mint because of the colors. It's a personal favorite. It's one I really enjoy driving a lot. Okay, so if you've been following along, Andy and I took this uh, 67 GTO from South Carolina to Miami last year. And as cool as it is driving a 60s muscle car, it is absolutely not cool in the cabin driving this thing around in the summer. It was hot. That being said, with the windows down, uh, the headliner takes a lot of beating. And because I installed it and I don't want to do it twice, we hit up Resto Mod Air and asked if they had a system that would work good with our 60s A body. So they hooked us up with their Haymaker system. Even if you want to bring your car back up to stock factory or you're going into an all out Resto Mod or Pro Driver, you might as well just equip it with the best AC that you can, R134A. Um, they don't allow the R12 systems anymore. And even looking stock, whatnot, this is about the cat's ass. So show you guys how to install it and when you should install it. Let's get into it, here we go. We generally don't do unboxing videos, but man, when the packages come like this in the foam, these are the uh, vents that we're gonna drill into the dash. Um, all aluminum, very much period correct. Um, the, the back, it, it's even got the foam in there so you don't get the squeaks and the rattles. Uh, it is a very, very nice system. The AC compressor does not come with it. I think they do that because um, different brackets for different engines. So we ordered ours with the Pontiac bracket, very nicely tigged together. Um, paint, we can paint it to match whatever color engine we have. In the box, we've got lots more goodies. This is the meat of the package. Your whole HVAC unit, which goes up against the firewall on the inside of the car. This will work for a smooth wall or still, we didn't touch our firewall, um, but I think it works for ours as well. You get your ductwork, your hoses, um, your lines, and then lots of little fittings. Um, as long as you have your instructions, kind of important. If you don't like reading, just watch the whole video. Here we go. Okay, so we've got the engine out, which I don't think is necessary, but it's coming out, so it's gonna help us anyway. I think I got all the bolts off around the outside. Let's see if we can pry that off and then maybe go on the inside and remove the heater core. Let's see if... I the double-sided glue there. A little bit, there we go. Um, I'm gonna think about what I'm gonna do exactly with this new hole in my firewall. Because the new Yona basically just goes up against, and you would be looking at that. 
Um, so we're gonna cover that up somehow, nice and neat. Um, we'll put our uh, transmission controller on that, our receiver dryer, and maybe something else. Okay, so each car is gonna be a little bit different and there is no exact way to um, say this is how the system goes in your car. So you gotta kinda figure out what's best for you. Um, and what's best for us, and the way I like to do it, is just go through all your parts, make sure you have everything, make sure you have the right fittings, and enough of the right fittings. If you don't, um, order them up, or get a MoCo, whatever you need to do. Job. So this is the, the bulkhead that goes through the firewall. Um, we have to figure out where that's gonna go in relation to the receiver dryer. Um, I found all the fittings that uh, go through the firewall and attach to my um, condenser and to my um, evap, evap unit. So on the picture it shows the 90s going through the firewall, um, but I found that the 90s are going to look better if I loop the lines this with a straight fitting right here. So essentially this fitting will fit, this will be right about here. Uh, these lines will go into here and then the receiver dryer is going to be right outside here. Now, um, I'm also going to, um, I'll probably have to modify this line height wise and distance wise. Um, I'm also going to put my e easy TCU computer right in between to fill up a little bit of the space on the firewall because I have a big giant hole that I need to fill and sleeping on it and me wanting to do everything right. I'll show you what we gotta do. Here we go. Okay, so this kit is designed for a smoothed out firewall, meaning that this hole is not here. And either this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, or this one. <laughs> now when we put the car together, this whole thing kind of changed uh, from when we started building the car four or five years ago. Um, and this is what we had. When we bought the car, it had a brand new heater core in it and we didn't even consider um, flattening this out but we are gonna do that now so what we're gonna do because this is flat um, the transmission tunnel I can't really change so we're gonna replace it all the way up to probably I haven't decided if I'm stopping at this seam and then filling in these holes or going right over and starting over but regardless we're gonna start drilling these out peeling this firewall off now the car is kind of together it's not gonna shift or move or anything or distort anything else um, fenders and everything will keep it in place. We're gonna cover the whole car up. We're gonna butt weld and weld in a new panel. And then we can put our bulkhead in probably right about here. Our receiver dryer is probably gonna go right about here. And the easy shift is gonna be somewhere around here. Um, then I can tuck my hoses nicely, either along the side or even through the fender, coming up to my AC compressor right here and then the uh, the wiring for the transmission controller I can tuck nicely underneath out of the exhaust there's gonna be nothing here and then it'll be that much better I just really wish I would have done this before we sent it to Dixon's for paint but I'll be careful like little just little butt welds at a time so here we go We've got our sheet of steel, nice flat firewall there, minus the transmission hump right there um, in place, but not welded. Because before we weld everything in place, we might as well drill all the holes for the bulkhead and mount the AC unit on the inside. So um, basically I'm just gonna measure from the inside from the top down. We need about two inches for the vent hoses to come off the top. And we need about six to nine inches from the um, the very far right side of the AC unit to the very far right side of the car and that'll leave us room for hoses and the bulk bit. So we can just mark that out and then basically lay the unit nicely on top of it on that sheet of steel and then start uh, mounting it. There we go. Professional that is. I wrote six, eight, nine inches from that side. I got an inch and a half all the way over and two inches down all the way along the top. And you can almost read that. In another life, I was a doctor. Okay, so that's uh, basically how it's gonna sit. We got two inches, 
to be able to have our ductwork kind of laying flat. Um, we've got it level. This is actually level with the car. So that's important because otherwise your water will pool. So you need to have a drain that can go out uh, somewhere. Don't dump that anywhere. You don't want that dumping into your frame or anything stupid where water is going to sit and rot something away. Keep that in mind. And then we'll put our bulkhead right about here. Um, we'll drop that through. We'll keep that all on this piece of tin. We'll weld our studs on the inside here. Um, and then this bracket will have to match the transmission tunnel so we'll get into that afterwards um, once we do our bulkhead then I can flip it over and figure out where the receiver driver is going to go on the firewall and also the easy tuner ECU for the transmission so we want everything to be nice and neat um, we got we got a foot so we've got to make sure that these hoses are able to go in um, and Yours might be completely different, but I want the I, it works best with the 90s here, and then the hose can come down nicely through the bulkhead. Uh, these two for your high and low sides, and then these two imagine there was a bulkhead here um, that would be for your water hoses. Um, this valve has to go in between here, um, and we can still do that and then put our hoses there. So we start by drilling the holes for the bulkhead. This is the other side, this is the layout that we're going to go with, so we're going to do coolant hose here and here, we're going to an easy two in here, put the receiver dry right about here, and put this line right about here, tie it in right there, perfect. Now this hose will come out, so this line and this line will kind of meet up together and go out. Okay, so that's basically how it's going to look, very important to have your water valve pointing in the right direction between the heater core and the water pump. Our water pump will be on the very outside of this fitting. Um, that's your other heater core, hose, and then your two AC lines. Uh, we're still within the foot height, so that should fit. We've got two inches to put our ductwork on the top. So now we can weld our studs kind of where we like it. Uh, we'll do that on the inside. Uh, this bracket is for a flat firewall. It's kind of right where my hump is, so it doesn't really work for me but uh, we'll, we'll just notch it and trim it. If you have the curved firewall, then you don't need this bracket and this will end up right on your firewall. So, that's that. Um, we can make the mounts for the other side, weld them in place. Then, or do we weld anything? I don't think we weld anything. We just, we just bolt that to the firewall, so. I think we can start prepping the firewall and then weld this panel in place. Exciting, here we go. This is the biggest bulk of the work. Other than that, it's just plugging it in, running some power and uh, running the lines under the hood. But this is the biggest job right here. Once you have this mounted, easy peasy, here we go. Went for an erratic pattern because that's how we spot weld would have been originally, not spaced nice and evenly apart. It's really important when you're doing a car like this to keep everything looking original. <laughs> Almost made it without that. Okay, so we've got everything uh, kind of mocked up. I put the, um, the pass through, through the wall there. I got the um, plate nice. We've got this mounted and looks fantastic there, but those hoses are a scooch low and they could go a little higher up on my wall there because it hits the fender. Uh, not on the fender, like it's fine. There's there's no problem. Got a lot of space there, but um, I just, so the problem is I drilled two holes here. So I can use these two holes as the bottom ones and move the valve body up 
And I will do that because I need somewhere to run my wires through too. So those are now going to be grommets with wire harnesses going through it for the transmission, the AC, and probably the gauges. And then we'll leave the engine harnesses alone on that side of the engine. See, some people make problems and some people just come up with solutions. Here we go. All right, so I got seam sealer on my welds on the inside here. In the meantime, we'll cut in our vents. So we've got, uh, looks like three inch and a two inch vent, two of each. Um, right here, we're gonna get rid of the radio control here. So the, the whole dash covers this. Um, down here was the radio and up here were the heater controls. We are going to put the heater controls from Restomod Air down here and then put two of these vents right up, right up right here. And that leaves the bigger ones for right here. So these will be pointing at you and you can spin these around however you like. And we'll find center, put some tape over it, and then drill a big giant hole in our dash that we can't ever put back again. Let's just, let's do everything all over again. Here we go. I think uh, it is a little concave, so we'll put a little bit of a gasket in behind there, so just so that there's no chance of it kind of wiggling, but that looks really nice. It's for sale on eBay, go check it out. All right, we got some, a couple skim coats of filler on there just to smooth everything out and cover up the welds just slightly. Um, we got some seam sealer on the top there to protect everything. We'll mask off the car, splash some paint on it, and call it a night. Here we go. Okay, so the wiring is very straightforward. We've got uh, orange, yellow, blue, red, green, and they're all marked. Um, there's colors around the ECU, and then each one of the ports is marked. So really just your servo motors for um, whether it's floor, a window, and then uh, your valve to shut off the coolant, your blower motor. Pretty self-explanatory. I tied it up um, just so that the wires would be kind of neat. These are our controls, which we will mount in. So these have LED lights in behind them which is what the blue and the black lights are for. And then, um, yeah, before we put the box in the way of the vents, we'll mount our vents, and then um, the hoses just slip over the clips, and they just stay in place there, and then zip tied around here. So, here we go. Once it's all back there, it's pretty straightforward. Just rooted all the hoses nicely together. I uh, tap the ECU onto the top there. Um, the uh, the vents weren't a direct bolt on, so I just stuck them inside the other one and then seam sealed it together. And then the hoses will nicely just connect to that. So um, just these wires are the control and the powers and then the rest is the wiring for the rest of the car so we'll run our ductwork um, to replace the dash here as well so we'll take some of those wires plug into the dash a lot of the other ones are useless but um, that's a really nice fit so here we go all right so we're doing a lot of stuff at the same time but if you want to see a good engine install because all of a sudden there's an engine in here go back and watch the power tour uh, video where we installed it uh, after building it installed it at power tour but so the engine is back in again the rest under the hood is super easy um, the condenser goes at the very front in front of your radiator radiator rad 
Everybody makes fun of the way I say it. So if I say all three, they're telling me I'm saying it wrong. So um, two to my uh, rad support. And then the two brackets are on the right angle because as this is uh, facing forward on the A-frame, it keeps the um, condenser perfectly straight up and down. Now pop the hoses in. Um, I didn't crimp them yet because I want to make sure that everything is nice and neat and nothing gets pinched or whatever. Mounted the AC compressor and then ran the hoses in to the uh, receiver dryer and to the bulkhead. So. Now that all of that's done, uh, because we're overlapping things a little bit, next video we'll tie in the wiring with the new dash and the stereo that we're gonna put into it. And then when that's done and the transmission's in there, we can actually drive it. We'll drive it over to the shop to get the AC charged and uh, show you how 